You've unlocked a roundtable. Welcome to the Lost Levels roundtable discussion of Revenant. My name's Chris Levan. With me, as always, is Alex. Hello. And we just watched a couple movies today. Uh, so we're starting off with Revenant because it's the one that came out this weekend. Uh, the popular uh, Oscar bait for Leonardo DiCaprio. Will he or won't he win an <sighs> award for this sh- this portrayal of... Is it based on a true story? It's. I think it's loosely, yeah, from what I heard. Did they? I think they they kind of uh, marketed it like that. Yeah. Um. And yeah, you know, I feel like I read an article like, yeah, it's, it's based off a true story, kind of. Here's here's what they Hollywooded up for it, mm-hmm. as you, to be expected. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because you have to make some stories interesting, as we learned with uh, Moby Dick. <laughs> uh, the movie that just came out recently it was a little bit too true to the story because it was a boring movie that didn't really happen uh, we haven't seen it yet but like everything that I've read about it oh. just like not a lot happens that's that kind of the theme for the year though so I guess that's true like, these these movies are getting longer for no good damn reason apparently yeah maybe they're feeling like oh we have to justify a large admission price so we now have to make a three-hour movie, or a two-and-a-half-hour movie, but holy shit, this was a, another, th- what? It's two-and-a-half. Uh, this is a two-and-a-half hours. Uh, felt every second of it. Yeah. Uh, there, <laughs> there was often times where I felt like looking at my phone and checking my email, <laughs> or, or, or maybe just checking my Twitter feed, uh, just because I wasn't in, like... Yes, it I, wasn't engaging enough to hold our attention it seemed which is like i feel like i'm gonna be on the minority with that i feel like uh when i go look at reviews uh tomorrow to see what other opinions are i feel like i'm gonna be in the minority i think everybody's gonna really enjoy this movie i think that it's gonna be that type of i don't want to say bro movie but i, I want to say that the type of movie where it has this crazy action and like holy shit this guy's been through so much it's so badass awesome uh and, it, and i just feel like that's what it's going to be i think that's how a lot of people are going to like it yeah i maybe you're right i i, I it's hard for me to judge what other people are going to think just cuz i i you know i see a movie and i have my my view on it and i and it's hard for me to get other people's perspective on it Oh man, I love doing that. I love going to watch a movie, not talking about it at all. Uh, but you, you and I, and yeah. then we finally we get to talk about it when we're when the the mic is on. Yeah, I really enjoy that. But then, second and after we record, I love going online and checking out other people's reviews because I want to see what I missed. I want to see what other people see, and and it's just it's fascinating mm-hmm. to me. So I always do that with a lot of stuff, and this is definitely going to be one of those movies where I just kind of feel that. A majority of people are going to enjoy this movie uh, more than I did. And I really hate that. It's kind of frustrating because the other part of that, too, is the only thing I said about the movie beforehand was I really don't know what to say about this because it's a pattern that we've been watching in Hollywood, as you kind of mentioned, where we see these movies... And they're all kind of just the same. They're too long. The pacing's just not there to keep you engaged. Right. And we're supposed to enjoy that. I mean, and that that's happening last year as well with movies like Wolf of Wall Street and uh, American Hustle. Yeah. These, these acclaimed movies where we're sitting and going, what what are we missing? What or what are other people seeing that we're not? Or what are we seeing that they're not? Even I wonder if there's any listeners out there like, oh man, Wolf of Wall Street. I need to go watch that again. I I'm like, sure there are because I mean, you still see fucking memes of it popping up online occasionally, and it's just like it, it has had some cultural substance because of that. Uh, didn't he just die too? Like the actual Wolf of Wall Street? I think I saw an article where he actually passed away. Maybe I don't know. Uh, this week or something. It was, it was relatively recent, I believe, so I saw. You know, yeah, I feel like I saw something like that pop up. Or the, yeah, it could be right. Uh, but yeah, all right. Back to this movie, Revenant. We... The other you know, you know, DiCaprio movie that he's probably not going with an Oscar for. Yeah, it, in all honesty, like comparing the two, like just because of Leonardo movies, that's the reason why I'm comparing it. I liked his performance better in Wolf of Wall Street. 
because there is more to that character and there is a lot more to betray. I mean, he he plays a very silent character in this one, with good reason because he gets, I mean, he gets messed up pretty bad. Yeah, I think he does fine. I think he does fine for the role. Mm-hmm. But I'm not looking at it saying, "Oh my God, this is the the Oscar winning performance of the year." I I I would give him the Oscar. I don't I don't feel that. No. Um, I mean, granted, I'm sure he went through production hell for that because the scenes he's in just look uncomfortable and i'm like i i don't want to suffer that much for my art no uh, <laughs> like that shit looked cold and wet i'm not about that life yeah living living in that time must have really sucked like there's nothing enjoyable about that time no uh, it's just you're out in the wilderness you have to survive any which way you know how or can uh, so you have to become a survivalist and it's just a miserable thing i i looked at alex at one point in the movie like what would you rather have as a weapon? One of these uh, rifles that you need to put powder in or a bow and arrow? Yeah. And I think we both kind of agreed on bow and arrow just because of the quicker fire rate. Yeah, you have to have rate of fire. Yeah. If you have several enemies coming at you, you have one shot. You kill one of them. Now you still have three other people coming at you. Yeah. Uh, with a bow and arrow, at least you have a chance to draw another one. Yeah. Instead of putting the rifle down, so putting, putting some powder, powder in, in, putting the yeah. bullet in. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just, it doesn't seem very, like, I, I guess it's technology, technology advancing, but it's like a miserable time for that technology. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like the beta stage of it. Yeah. Like it's, it's, there's some jank to it, but this is the future guys. Come on. Yeah. And obviously it is the future, but like, it's just, it's just weird seeing that, man. It's like, I would not want to be living there with a bow and arrow. Oh, I'm sorry. With a, with a rifle during that time. No. I mean, they could do more damage to the, the bigger brutes than I think a bow and arrow, but... Yeah, but, like, accuracy, too, was an issue with yeah, those things. Yeah, definitely. You know, you don't have pinpoint accuracy no, with it. No, not at all. I don't know. So, you're not going to snipe something 100 yards away. And realistically, if you're talking about, like, bigger brutes, like a giant bear attacking you, yeah. a rifle at close range is not knocking that bear down. No, but it's going to do more damage than a bow and arrow. It's going to piss that thing off. True. As we see in the movie. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's uh it's interesting. Um, not getting into spoilers, obviously. I didn't give the forewarning at the beginning of the podcast, which I normally do. But uh, yeah, it, it's we're not going to go into spoilers here. We're going to go into spoilers after our sign off, right? Because that way we can talk about it a little bit more freely. So uh, yeah, Leonardo's performance, good, I mean, not Oscar worthy, not great. Yeah. I mean, it, it's okay. It, and, it's, and it's it's nothing to do with him as the actor i think it's just more to do with the script and what mm-hmm. he had to do with it yeah there, one, there wasn't enough given to him for it 100 percent agree i think that a lot of it it's um it's physical acting and i think he does a good job with the physical acting but mm-hmm. i for the performance of the oscar i think I, I need to see a little bit more uh overall though he does good i think tom hardy does a great job right um this is another tom hardy movie that we, we recently did legend um, so this is a role that I liked him in. Yeah, I generally like him in most everything I see. But yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I liked him in this. Uh, uh, who was... I forgot the per- the person's name, but he was recently in the Star Wars The Force Awakens. Um, the the redheaded dude, right? Yes. Oh, sh- yeah, I can't think of his name. He, he's popping up more and more now. And I... He I was in Mr. Robot. Or not oh. Mr. Robot. Uh, the other. Uh, Ex Machina. The, the one about a robot, or AI, right? Wasn't he the redhead? Is he? I think, I think he it's is. the same guy. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I I enjoy him. Like, yeah, I, he's he's showing up a lot, and he's doing a good job. Yeah, I, I honestly think that he does a good job in these movies, and, and he does deserve the work that he's been getting. Uh, what else do you think about, for like in terms of the acting, that people kind of stood out? The bear? <laughs> The bear did good. Yeah, I think the bear did good. He, he followed his cue as well. Yeah, uh, I think there was a couple mishaps there, but I think overall they probably got the best, the best, uh, the scenes from him possible. Right. Good job to the bear. He should win an Oscar, I think. Yeah, I think the for, bear for should best uh, minor role, <laughs> best supporting actor. Yes. Dom Hall Gleason. That's the guy's name. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good job for him. That's not the bear's name. That no, is... no, no. That's the the guy from Ex Machina. Okay. But, uh, yeah, 
does a good job. Okay, what do you think about the story? Um, it's it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's there's there's nothing to it. It's it is a story that we've seen time and time again, just in a different period and setting, really. Yeah, that's how I kind of felt this too. Like this this movie because of technology advancing to the point of where we can see a bear attack a little bit in a more realistic light without having to actually have a live bear right that uh, doing something so you have you have this um animal that you can CGI essentially and have this brutal fight with and as well as just kind of like it is a kind of a vanilla story that you don't really just sexied up a lot yeah you know, you're just not engaged as much as you could be because of the pacing of the movie. You know, the story mm-hmm. is just a, a vanilla story, and it's just drawn out to this one man's experience in the wilderness. And you're just kind of like, I felt like at one point I wanted to turn to you and be like, well, what's he doing again? Because yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's just a survival story, but all, that's not the major reason he's doing it. Yeah. It's... Right, it's you're you're such, you're watching him survive for two hours. That's essentially it, and just get the shit kicked out of him. Yeah, in the process, you know, he he happens to survive circumstances, and surprisingly enough, and yeah, it, it's a heart almost unbelievably enough. Yeah, that it's also uh, poorly. It poorly describes how well time passes. You, yeah, you don't really get a sense of time or anything in this. You know, if if it's a night and then he wakes up in the morning, it might be three months later because some of his wounds have healed. Mm-hmm. And snow is melting and stuff. like it's. Yeah, so you don't know if it's like he just slept overnight or he slept for a month or three months because broken bones don't heal overnight. No. Uh, broken bones that I'm talking about, like having uh, weight on a foot. <laughs> Um, being able to walk. I mean, they show him on crutches, or like, on crutches, yeah, because they had crutches back then. Right. Uh, they showed him wear, walking with like a wood cane. Yeah, supporting himself on a stick. And then, like, a night or two later, he's walking okay, for the most part. And it seems like it's only a night or two later, but it's just, it's, like, again, almost unbelievable that that would happen that quickly. Yeah, and that's, the sense of time in this movie is all over. Like, you can't tell what's going on, like... At one moment, you see these people, like, are they going to survive because they're trying to get back to their fort? And then the next moment, they, they might, you know, it, it's just time passes. They're, like, progressed a lot of the story mm-hmm. um, or the, out of either convenience or just poor telling of time. And, and poor management of time because of the pacing in this movie. Yeah, and it's just, it's unfortunate because there is interesting stuff here, like, visually... Oh, visually, this movie's stunning. It's shot incredibly well. Like, I, I'm a sucker for a good tracking shot, and this movie had quite a few of those. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I mean, that can only hold my interest for so long. Not two and a half hours. No, 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 definitely not two and a half hours. Which is, yeah, it, it's, that's, I think, the problem with it. It's just that the pacing really bogs down everything else that's in the story for for what's good um gets lost kind of in that yeah but you know once again it's just it's a matter of you know making a tight movie and I feel like I was forgetting how to do that yeah and I I don't <laughs> I just don't get why that's happening. That's the sad thing. That's what it's really hard reviewing some of these movies now because I mean I don't want to say the same thing over and over again. I want to bring something new and interesting to the table when we're talking about these movies. But at the same time, it's just like, hey, guess what? This problem this movie had the same problem as the last three that we just right. read. It happened in Legend, it happened in Hateful Eight. It's And it's all recent movies that we've done. So, like, I was really hesitant about this. Jesus Christ, yeah. Like, I just need need a fun, short little comedy that I can talk about without having it being bogged down by a long pacing story that just drags on. Well, yeah, let's let's, let's look at some movies we did like this year, like Krampus and It Follows, where 
I mean, both horror movies, which aren't nat- naturally our, our type of movie, but the pacing was so good and so tight that we enjoyed it for that. So it's a genre that we really not, don't have much affinity for that we're liking these movies because they are crafted well and, and in such a short way. That's really well said because you're right. The, the horror genre is the least favorite of our genres. Um, but... I, I'm starting to like it a lot more, honestly, just because of that. Because I feel like that that's always kind of been the horror genre thing is let's get a quick short story in there. We don't need long narrative. And ex, uh... You don't need long narrative, period. You don't need yeah. narrative. Right, <laughs> but it's. It. I mean, I I feel like as, as technology is progressing and you get better production value on a smaller budget, the horror genre is becoming better. Wow! Now now that we're like talking about it a little bit, I'm starting to think of my best movies of the year. I'm also thinking of my favorite games of the year, and you just mentioned like two horror movies and another horror game that I'm thinking. Of Until Dawn, yeah, uh, that I also really enjoyed this year. Something that it's not char- characteristic for me, for that genre. I mean, for storytelling, obviously, Until Dawn would probably be a no-brainer for me. But uh, I'm just surprised by that because I've never really been drawn to it. I hate like Eli Roth uh, torture porn. Yeah, I mean th- that's that's very different than what I consider a horror movie. Like I don't but... like those. I like like thrillers or like. Something psychological, mm-hmm. something where it's not over the top monster necessarily. It's more of the the scare because you don't know what's going to happen next type of thing. Right, but which it follows is perfect for that. Exactly. But the back on topic. I mean, it's just <laughs> just because you have a budget and a lot of production value doesn't mean you need to make a huge, long, drawn out movie because in the end, it's going to make for a boring movie. Yeah, and the other part of that too is sometimes a boring movie could be masked by a good soundtrack, something where you can kind of disguise some of some of this stuff. But I particularly noticed the soundtrack in here that I didn't really care for it. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't like it very much. I know they went for like a lot of silent moments where they wanted to show scenery and just dead silence so they did a lot of that a little too much i know i was praising it for its good shots but while there were gorgeous shots in there they hung on those shots a little too long and a lot yeah they yeah. did that they i don't know if that was them trying to uh break time um up but mm-hmm. like here here's some scenery of a valley and yeah. now back to the story yes and uh, now a mountain again right it's like Oh, the snow on this mountain, like this other mountain that we just saw. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really care for the soundtrack very much. And uh, we were just flipping through t- uh, channels right now, <laughs> and the Golden Globes are on. And sure enough, the soundtrack uh, comes up, uh, the so- soundtrack it category, for, and yeah. it's nominated for uh, an award. And I was like, wow, I'm way off in terms of my enjoyment of it, because I, I didn't like this soundtrack very much. And I, I've gone on record saying that the Force Awakens uh, John Williams score is probably his worst out of the ones. I just I mm-hmm. I think it was very lazy. I didn't think it was a very good. Well, soundtrack. I, I feel like other people have corroborated that. I've I've, I've heard the opposite. I've heard really? oh genius score. No, oh. and I I thought it was definitely the weakest. I thought he really did an awesome job in the prequels. And it's weird saying that because I'm saying something about the positive about the prequels, but. Uh, overall, he those scores are actually really solid scores. Mm-hmm. Like the Darth Maul one, uh, the Anakin Padme love story one is really freaking right. good. But there's some great scores, but The Force Awakens, I, I felt like that kind of shit to bed. Uh, regardless, this soundtrack also didn't pull me in. I was kind of drawn out of the movie by it because, like, ah, this is just kind of sounds samey. Yeah, it's, it's like just samey sounds. Yeah. It's like, all right. I yeah, for me it didn't grab my attention. I I didn't really notice it that much, so I don't think I was bothered by it. But it definitely didn't make an impression on me by any means. Yeah, I'd be interesting to see this movie with like a a full orchestra behind it to see like a a, a just a different comparison to it. Well, how that would change this movie. Uh, whenever if you're watching this movie, if you haven't watched it yet, and you're going to go watch it. Uh, Listen a little bit to the score, pay attention to it, and then try to think of like a different type of genre uh, of a score that might fit it. 
it'd be kind of interesting to see what people say. Electropop? Yeah, like a K-pop or maybe a J-pop. Definitely. Would be pretty awesome. No. Okay. Not at all. But open Gangnam style. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Uh, but no. Uh, yeah, so what What do you... I mean... What What else do you want to talk about this movie in the I, non-spoiler I, section? No, there's really anything much more to talk on. Okay. About it. I mean, I mean, this, despite some gorgeous shots and really good tracking shots and just com- they're composed well, there's, there's, there's really not much to this movie. I mean, like... I applaud the actors for doing what they did in those conditions for as long as they did. But in the end, I don't think they really did it for a movie that's worth it, (laughs) it's sad to say. Yeah, there's not a great, there's not great substance there. Right. That would warrant me spending, you know, six months out in the bitter cold and miserable atmosphere because yeah. like I, i'd read the script i'm like i'm not making you know a, a, a phenomenal movie here it's like it's okay um i'm sure it's talked up i'm sure the the pitch for it was absolutely amazing but the delivery of just the pacing was so off like I, I just i didn't care about it i guess that's my final kind of thought on it uh what, what's your final thought uh, you, you basically said it right there as well yeah so um all right so those are our final thoughts i would say it's a movie you're probably going to watch regardless of our opinions uh, because uh, it's something that you're going to hear people talk about a lot. And you're you going to know, know, yeah, you're going to want to know what they're, they're, they're seeing. And, they're, and I think it's going to be a lot more positive than we're kind of spinning it here uh, in terms of like the general moviegoer. I think that you'll, you'll see people like, oh my god, that bear fight was freaking amazing. Or, you know, Leonardo's... I, I have been seeing people have been saying that, so... Or Leonardo's performance is, like, you know, out of the park. He deserves an Oscar for this. Um, but, you know, in reality, I, I felt Wolf of Wall Street, a movie that I didn't, didn't particularly care for that much, uh, his performance was better in that. We've kind of talked about that at the mm-hmm. beginning of this. But, yeah, I just... I There's not enough for me to sit there again and watch this movie. It's it's definitely... No. A, it's, oh, a, it's God, a, no. Not for me either. It's a one and done. I, I was... Like I said, if a movie makes me feel the urge to pull my phone out and look at other stuff, that means I'm not really engaged into the movie. And I want to be engaged into the movie. That's what I talk about time and time again when we're doing reviews. But I wanted to look at my phone. Yeah. So if that's any indication of like how I felt about <laughs> this movie, there it is. So uh, after the credits here, we're going to go into our spoiler section and we can talk a little bit more about about uh, in really depth action about and stuff yeah. like that. So, uh, hang on, and we'll talk about that soon. So, Alex, how can we reach you? You can follow me on Twitter. My name there is Alex Sandberg, A L E X S A N B E R G, or email me directly at the website alexatlawsol.com. What about you, Chris? I'm on twittercom calm intensity. I also have an Instagram that I, I opened up that it's going to be Chris's Calm. And if you want to email me, if you want to talk about the score or maybe something else, regarding this movie that maybe I'm totally missing the mark on or something that you felt you really enjoyed but I just didn't like. I'd love to talk about it get your opinions. It's uh, podcasts at lostlevel.com. And all this information is on lostlevel.com and our contacts link. Or in the upper right-hand corner, you can also see all of our social media links. Uh, We have Twitter up there, Facebook up there, iTunes, iTunes. what, YouTube, YouTube, yeah, uh, which we're also trying to heavily promote, and we're doing some YouTube stuff there. So that's definitely something we want to uh, uh, you guys to subscribe to. We'd really appreciate that. So thanks for listening. Uh, hang out for spoilers, and we'll talk to you guys soon. And spoilers. Spoilers. All right. So Alex, yeah. First of all, you want to talk about? Um. Well, I mean, th- this is. We didn't go in depth. He said this was a very vanilla story, and it's vanilla because it's your basic revenge story. Yeah, and that's what I I was going to talk about that at the beginning, or during the podcast. I, I didn't want to get into the I mean, actual yeah, plot of it. So. I, I feel like they, they do touch on it during the previews, because you do see Lana saying, like, he took my boy, yeah. or, or he took him from me. So I, I think, you know, through that, you, it's indicated that his son is killed. 
but also from what I, from what I understand, we were talking about how this is based off a true story. From what I heard, and the true story is he didn't even have a son. He just wanted his fucking gear back because they took all his gear, and he was just really going out to find it, get his shit back. Are you serious? Uh, if according to the cracked article that I glanced over, yes. Interesting. And would not make a very good story for Hollywood, no. so they added the sun. Yeah, it's which <laughs> almost I would find more compelling because it kind of reminds me of that movie Payback. If you ever saw that with Mel Gibson, I did, and I don't remember very much of it. He he's a criminal, and he does this this crime, and he he doesn't get paid out for it, so he goes down hunting people for for some measly sum was like five thousand dollars or something like that and this one guy's like you're doing this for five thousand dollars i'll give you this much he's like no i don't want this much i just want what i'm owed by these people so like which it was kind of a cool movie you know that doesn't get a lot of praise i mean it wasn't that great movie but a cool concept and i think he did a good job in this i kind of would like to see this just about this guy like no this is about principle and pride i just want my shit back and i want these people to pay mm-hmm. i will found that more compelling but if you're wanting to try to get the Oscar grab... Nope, it has to be a dead son. You have to do the dead family. You have to show him longing for it with seeing his ex-wife, um, or I don't know if it was his wife, his ex-spouse or whoever she was. The him, mother of the child. Uh, in in uh, Hallucinations. Right. Actually seeing her and hearing her voice and uh, longing for her. Like, they really did the over-the-top um, son and father caring for each other stuff. They really, really wanted to get into that mm-hmm. and, and show those emotions and feelings. So you care about those things. So as the movie carries on, that is the, the over over the, over the theme, the theme. Yeah, definitely. It's just... But once again, it's a story we've seen so many times and done in such a better way that it. I don't get why you're just going to, you know, half-ass it. A Gladiator was the same fucking movie. The Russell Crowe movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, but, but more similar. compelling. I well, think. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That was a good movie. That was a solid, yeah. kept you into it. You know, you see the rise and fall of the character. You see, like... Um, he just wants to get back to his family. His family's murdered, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it's a story about revenge. And this is a very similar type of story, not necessarily beat for beat. No, oh, definitely not beat for beat. It plays out very differently in different ways. But, but yeah, it's the, it's the story that we've seen uh, multiple times, done a lot better. So you have a cool bear fight. And as, as you just touched on at the very end here, that's what a lot of people are going to talk about. Yeah, because that's what everyone's been talking about. They were talking about beforehand, so like, is he being raped by a bear? And people are like, no, you're stupid. He stood between a bear and its cubs. He's going to get fucked up. <laughs> I mean, but that, that bear fight was done very well. I mean, it, it was shot very well. Um, the, that, that bear was CGI, right? Like, yeah, they had to be. Yeah. It looked great, like it was almost flawless looking mm-hmm. for CGI. But um, other than that, like it, it was brutal. And a lot of this movie is brutal. Yeah, th- th- this movie definitely does not pull any punches. Uh, it is set in a time where shit was just gory, man. Like the- right. There's I mean, no modern way to describe it or to censor it. It's just like you're in the wilderness. You're just gonna eat whatever the fuck you can find. Uh, you're you you need warmth. You're going to rip open a dead carcass, rip mm-hmm. out all the guts, and crawl up inside there like a tauntaun. <laughs> right. And but at the same time, seeing all that, seeing him go from eating the raw fish to eating just raw bison meat or whatever. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, going from seeing to meat of raw fish to raw bison meat, like it's like, okay, we get it. he's eating all this shit food. We we don't need to keep going through all of this. But it shows him surviving. 
yes, we get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> we fucking, he, he's surviving. But he had his help from his Indian friend. Who just gets hung. Yeah, I mean, that was sad. I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I really... There was no affinity for that character developed at all. Well, the fact that he, he doesn't kill him, uh, he's on his own, like, revenge quest. Mm-hmm. And, uh, helps try to heal him by giving him warmth and shelter, and then next thing you know, uh, there, there's a couple cocoon, uh, moments in this movie where he just comes out of this cocoon and, like, that's what I'm talking about, like, time... Yeah. Where's the time pass? Because, was it at night? And then the next morning he awakens and... How and long he, was he in that horse? Because he's he feels better. How long was he in that grave? You know? It's like... Yeah, there, there's several moments of, like, cocooning. Like, I, I don't get it. Uh, they, was he hibernating like a bear that attacked him? They didn't do very well in terms of... What do you... Give me that. <laughs> Uh, it's just it's weird. Um, to, to I I don't get it. I don't I don't know, man. Yeah, I just <sighs> pacing yeah. issues, just boring story issues. There's, there's I don't know. There, we there's not much to say about this movie because there's not much there, honestly. Yeah, and then you had like the, those French explorers or whatever. Oh yeah. And and you would think that there was going to be like this huge like maybe strife or battle between the Indians and them, uh, because they're such on diff, like it, what's the word, rocky ground. Yes, I there, guess there, there's much tension between them. So obviously there should be something there, but there isn't. There's no real huge payoff there. No, um, it's just it was filler almost. Yeah, I mean that's what it was. I mean, they're 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 a way for. What was the whole them looking for their Indian, uh, the chief's daughter? Uh, I think that was that was her daughter or his daughter or whatever. And yeah. then is that the reason they didn't kill him at the end? I guess because she was like, "No, nah, man, that dude saved my life." I guess, yeah. So they gave him a pass. Mm-hmm. Did we need that? No. Did we need them in the story? No. So this could have been two and a half. Or 215 and have been a lot tighter? Uh, not a lot tighter. They've been marginally <laughs> tighter. But yeah, there, there's, that's, that's things. There's like these little subplot things that are going on that have little or no payoff and they don't need to be there aside from just this was the time. It was like, it, it felt like they were just trying to show you this is the era. This is what's going on then, you know, uh, settlers and right, exploring and. In Indians and, and Native Americans, sir. Sorry, Native Americans, and we need to see all that stuff and see how pissed off they are at the white man. Yeah, and just make it brutal as fuck. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I don't know what else to say. What, what else do you got for spoiler section? That, that's it, because th there's not a lot of story here to spoil. Son's killed. He goes on a revenge quest for the son. Gets fucked up by a bear prior to that. And tracks down Tom Hardy. And cuts his fingers off. Yeah, in a brutal fight. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Alright. So let us know your thoughts. I, I'd be really curious to see if you guys really like this movie. Uh, kind of felt like us. Or if you're just kind of in the middle like, eh, whatever. Because uh, that's how we kind of feel. It's, eh, yeah. It's not great. It's not good. Just, it's there. Exactly. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We really appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Bye.